We've talked a lot about aggregate demand over the last few videos. And so in this video, I thought I would talk a little bit about aggregate supply. And in particular, we're going to think about aggregate supply in the long run. And in economics, whether it's in micro or macroeconomics, when we think about long run, we're thinking about enough time for a lot of fixed costs and a lot of fixed contracts to expire. So in the short term, you might be stuck into some labor contract or stuck into you're using some factory that you've already paid money for, so it was a fixed cost. But over the long run, you'll have a chance that factory will wear down and you'll have a chance to decide whether you want another factory or the price of the factory might change. Or in the long run, you'll have a chance contracts will expire and you'll have a chance to renegotiate those contracts at a new price. And so that's what we really mean when we talk about the long run. And so I'm going to plot aggregate supply on the same axes as we, as we plotted aggregate demand. And we're going to focus on the long run now. And then we're going to think about what actually might happen in the short run while we, we are in fixed price contracts, or we already have spent money on something, or we, already, we have already, uh, in some ways, there are sticky things that can't adjust as quickly. But we'll first focus on the long run. So on this axis, I'm just going to plot price. And remember, we're thinking in macroeconomic terms. This is the prices, this is some measure of the prices of goods and services in our economy. And this axis right over here, the horizontal axis, is going to be real GDP. And once again, this is just a model. You should take everything, everything in economics with a huge grain of salt. These are oversimplifications of a highly, highly complex thing. I mean, the economy, millions and millions of actors doing complex things. Human beings, each of them in their brain, have billions and billions and billions of neurons doing all sorts of unpredictable things. But economists like to make really simplifying, super simplifying assumptions so that we can deal with it in a tractable way and even deal with it in a mathematical way. And so the assumption that economists often make when we think about aggregate supply and aggregate demand is in the long run, real GDP actually does not depend on prices in the long run. So what you have is, regardless of what the price is, you're going to have the same real GDP. And you could kind of view this as a natural natural level of productivity for the economy. So this is some level right over here. And it's important to realize this is just a snapshot in time, and this is all else things equal. So we're not assuming that we're having changes in productivity over time, or, or this is just a snapshot. If we did have any of those things that changed, so for example, if we had, if the population increased, then that would cause this level to shift to the right. Then we would have a higher natural level of productivity. If for whatever reason we were able to create tools so that it was easier to find people jobs, there's always a natural rate of unemployment. That you know, There's frictions. People have to look for jobs. Some people have to retrain to get their skills. But maybe we improve that in some way so that there's some website where people can find jobs easier or easier ways to train for jobs. And the natural level of unemployment goes down. More people can produce. That would also shift this curve to the right. You could have a reality where there's uh, te technological improvements that would also, and then all of a sudden, on an average, people would become more productive. That could shift things to the right. You could have discovery of natural resources, new land that is super fertile, and everything else. That could also shift things to the right. You could have, you could have a war. And maybe your factories get bombed, or you know, people, you know, bad things happen in a war. Factory, you know, especially if the war is on your soil, and that could actually shift things. That could actually shift things to the left. So it's important to realize that this is just taking a snapshot in time, and a lot of these other things that we think about would just shift it in one direction or another. So I'm going to leave you there, and you know, this is a kind of. It might not seem intuitive at first, because you're saying, wait, look, you know, if, if prices were to change dramatically, if all of a sudden everything in the economy got twice as expensive, that would have some impact on people's minds and that they would, they, would buy, they would behave differently and all the rest. And that might affect how much they can produce. And, and we did think a little bit about that when we thought about aggregate demand. But when we think about aggregate supply, this is, supply, we're just thinking about their capability to produce. And we're saying all else equal. We're saying that people's mind shifts aren't changing. Their willingness to work isn't changing. Nothing else is changing. Technology isn't changing. And given that, price really is just a numeric thing. If you just looked at the resources and the, producti the productive capability of a country, the factors of production, the people, and all the rest, Regardless of what the prices are, they, in theory, should be able to produce the same level of goods and services.